Hey guys, Captain Walnut back with a pretty special um, video for you guys today. Um, yeah, so I was going through a little bit of a nostalgia tour and decided to go back and look through some of my old war worlds, and I stumbled across a map that I was making a long, long time ago. <laughs> um, and it is a King of the Hill map. Um, yeah. So the whole entire idea would be that you'd have two teams, one on each side, competing to get to the middle of the map and press their button to start the timer going down from them themselves. So, like, I, of course, this side would be blue, and I'd have to change all the red wool to blue wool, and this side would be red, um, and then the red team would run in here, and they'd press their button, which I don't know which one would be, this one or that one, and it would start their timer and start stop the other timer, and then the other team would try to get in here and press their button, which would stop this timer and start their timer. Whichever team got down to zero first would win, and then the other team side would completely explode, like TNT would drop from the sky and explode it all. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this this game, I, I've nearly finished the map. It was down to the redstone. You can see I've got a seven-segment display. Um, this map is over a year old. So if the seven-segment display works at all, I'll be shocked. And it doesn't really. Five minutes and 40-something? Four, oh, 30... 8, 37, no, 9, 39, 37, there we go, yeah, so this, the 7 segment display doesn't really work anymore, um, but, yeah, so you get 7 minutes for each side, so you could have a total of 14 minute game, the timers wouldn't start at all until the first button was pushed, so you could have either a really frantic game if a team came out and pressed the button really quickly, or you could have a long, drawn out battle if the teams waited for a little bit and got, you know, ironed up and even diamond resources and started brewing potions for like hand grenades and stuff like that, you know, splash potions of harming could be hand grenades, things like that. Um, so why don't I take you on a little map tour? So, you'd spawn up here, in this area, and I hadn't finished working all this out yet, but you'd spawn up here in this area, and then you choose, you know, you go down the track to your team's side. And remember, this is over, this is over a year ago, this is way, way, way before command blocks, so now I could just do it where you teleport to your team's side. But, you go down the track to your team's side, and the nice thing is you can sort of see what's going on the whole time. You can very limitedly see what's going on, so as you're going down, you could sort of report to your team what the other team was up to, or see where you're needed. Come down here, drop down to this water pool, get out, come over here. And then, um, there's no useful blocks in this area. You can't craft anything with sand, there's no trees, you know, so you just have these fake pine trees. The only thing you really do have is down below here, there's a whole bunch of creeper spawners, and they would swim up. You can see I just arrived in this area, and the creepers started spawning, and they'd swim up, fall down, and die. And that's so you can make TNT. So you could use sand from this area to make TNT. There's a desert out there that you could use sand from to make TNT, but you'd have to keep coming back here to get your gunpowder for it, or kill creepers naturally. And here would just be a chest. And it would be z this map is designed for six players per team, um, between, you know, three and six. As you come out here, you'd have to punch down the fence with your fist, and then you'd be able to break out into here. This was back when animals could spawn on grass, so I didn't want there to be any, you know, grass blocks so that the animals wouldn't spawn. You'd have to get food from the sources I gave you. So here is a little mini farm. You could, of course, expand it if you wanted to. Um, and then you go through this forest. And the canopy on this forest is so dense that mobs can spawn underneath it once you get deeper into it. So you come around here, and you can see the mobs have started to spawn back here in the back. And of course, if I was in survival mode, they'd come out and try to kill me. So it would be a goal to sort of light that up. Now back here, this would be your arrow source. So the same thing is there'd be arrows down, there'd be there's tons of skeleton spawners down below. They swim up fall down and die, so that'd be a really good source of arrows. Now I do have arrows placed around the map, so you could use those. Up here is how you get up on top of these redstone mountains. Yes, the core of these mountains is entirely redstone, um, you know, ore. There's some bows and arrows in there, and there's actually a TNT cannon here with some TNT supplies and some ways to rebuild an iron sword and some ways to rebuild the cannon if it gets destroyed. 
Um, and then you can see this is aimed right at the middle, so you could just rain fire down upon any enemies that were in there. Um, yeah. So you come around out here. Yep, you come around out here, and now you're out of the forest, and you're into the wide open plains. Now, one of the biggest features that I wanted to have on this map is that everything's symmetrical. So this map is nearly a mirror image. You know, there's this canyon down the middle here, and it's all flipped across. You can see I have a little fortress on that side, and there's a little fortress on this side. I have a river flowing down there. I have a river flowing down here. And this river was going to be a useful river. So there's supposed to be watermelons in this thing, and it's kind of broken right now. But it's going to be, at any point in time, there's going to be tons and tons of watermelons in this river. So if you needed food, you could just jump in there and grab it. Okay. So you come out, and then eventually you get to that. Now, with the fortress, there's a corner cannon, so let's start at the base, I guess. There's a way in right here, where there's beds, an enchanting table. You can go up to the top. There's also a way in from the back side, over here, you know, so the hill. It's built into the hill, so you have entrances on both sides. Um, and then you can go up. There's some chests and the crafting table and some of this stuff. You can go up top here, and eventually you're at a corner cannon. Um, this is, was something that I had invented, something that was my invention back in the day. And this corner cannon was also aimed at the center, so you could shoot the center from here as well um, with TNT. And there's a little, some chests back here with TNT in them. And then out the back of that place was a bridge that crossed over to your brewing area. So here is where you could brew all your splash potions of healing or harming or whatever. Um, there's tons of nether wart in that chest, and then down there's a there's a bedrock thing above it to keep sunlight from hitting it because down below is a dark room with a poisonous spider spawner. And the reason for that is let me get out of here. If we keep going down this way, you'll notice that there is another tower with, you know, some food supply as well as the, the river down there for food. And then you can sort of it's a defensible space. I was thinking about putting some more useful stuff in here. TNT cannon aimed all the way across at the other guy's potion building. So there's the corresponding TNT cannon sh would shoot to here and could blow holes in the side of this building to release the baby spiders so they'd be able to come out and attack everything and hopefully even blow up this chest full of all the nether wart on the map. Um, there's no soul sand on this map, I don't think, so you wouldn't be able to grow nether wart. And of course, I hope you wouldn't be able to make... Um, I don't think there's much lava, so I don't think you'd be able to make enough... There's not enough lava to make a nether portal, I think. There's not more than ten source blocks. Um, or maybe there is... There's maybe eight source blocks on each side, so you'd actually have to gather it all. But anyway, yeah. Now, one of the cool things about this is... Actually, let me go to bed. Um, one of the cool things about this is there's tons of little secrets and cut-throughs and everything like that. So obviously the gorge and the river are two of the big main features. The gorge um, can very easily be crossed. So here I'm on the other team side and you can see that there's their gunpowder source and a little fountain and their everything. Um, the gorge can easily be crossed, but some of the resources you need for your side are on the other team side. So you can see how close that area is, and it's actually really far from their spawn, so it take the other team forever to run to here. So what you could actually do is you could cross over these mountains, you know, or you could go down this mine here, this mine shaft, to all this redstone. Of course, remember, you wouldn't have any picks yet at this point. You wouldn't have iron picks to be able to mine this. And you probably wouldn't have stone picks because you probably sprint, or you get some stone picks and you sprint down here right away. Go down through this mine shaft, and here's all the coal you'll ever need. And you can cross this little makeshift bridge in this gorge. And of course, you can build your own. No one's going to stop you from that. But the nice thing here is that this is where your iron supply is. There's tons of iron in here, and actually behind the walls. Yeah, behind the walls you'll see there's some iron blocks, um, which is pretty cool. So there's t plenty of iron in here that you'll to get what you need, and you can also swim up these water streams here, and then you'll be in the enemy's gorge, and you could cross up and sort of attack them from behind, or set off, steal their diamond, or even set off the TNT around this diamond here to, I uh, don't know why one's missing, maybe the enderman stole it, um, but set off the TNT here to blow up their diamonds. And the backup source of diamonds 
would be down here. You can see there's some diamonds in the wall. I don't know how deep it goes. Looks like... Oh, there's a whole bunch of diamonds. But there's a whole bunch of diamonds down here um, to come and get. And there's also a spiral staircase up around the King of the Hill Mountain. Now, the, king, the center of the King of the Hill Mountain is bedrock all the way up, so you wouldn't be able to actually destroy it all. But um, obsidian is also explosion resistant, you know. So eventually you come up here and there's bedrock on the floor. Um, one of the rules would be you would not be able to build in here except to replace the glowstone. Um, and then you have these derelict bridges, which are very easy to jump to. You know, you can get up on the railing and jump across, but you can't jump back. Um, so you'd need at least one block to get from your sub back from the middle to your side. So you have to have at least a teeny tiny bit of preparation. Um, the other nice thing about this is um, you can do sabotage. For instance, this is very, very, very exposed, so you could just grab some tea, come over here, and blow this up. So no um, skellies, you would, they wouldn't have their arrow farm anymore, so they'd lose one of the biggest supplies of arrows. Um, of course, in the event of that, there's a couple chests. I'm, I'm sort of just flying around randomly now, aren't I? A couple of chests have arrows in them, so you can see there's some bows and arrows in here. Um, oh, and another thing I was going to say about cutting through this mountain is you'll see this little waterfall here um, with a stream. Coming down this way, you'll see that this stream comes down here. And there was supposed to be, I guess I broke it because I was exploring this already. Yeah, right here, there's supposed to be a whole bunch of gravel on top of a dirt block. So when you broke the dirt, all the gravel would fall down. It just take you a little while to punch through it with your fist. But uh, it comes out here and ends at a half slab. So this is a secret way through the mountain. You see that? A secret, easy way to get through the mountain. But you see what this looks like to me? Sort of looks like a perfect um, TNT cannon. This gravel would be, you know, where you don't put redstone. You put redstone on the other side to launch the charge. And I'm getting, like, 15 frames per second right now, guys. I don't know why. I'm sorry about that. Uh, let me stop recording for a second and let my computer catch up. Frame rate does not seem to have improved. I'm still getting weird little lag spikes. I apologize for that. I don't know what's going on with my computer. But, um, yeah, see that, that little TNT cannon right there that makes the one you'd have to build? It would be aimed at their diamonds, so you could very easily blow it up if they didn't mine it quick enough. Um, so, yeah, and then also source of gold, because you need to be able to get gold for potions of health, right? So if we go into the back corner of either side, there is a tiny little mine shaft you'll see back here that you can go down. Um, there's nothing pretty to look at as you go down here. But eventually when you get down, you'll see that there's mushrooms down here and gold galore, which is pretty nice. There's tons and tons of gold down here. It's um, not, the, It doesn't go that deep into the wall, I don't think. But more importantly, you'll see there are pigment spawners down under some of this mycelium. So, and I don't know if I put mushroom spawners or not. Um... But you could easily breed them, you know, you could get some wheat and then breed them together to make more and more mushrooms if you wanted to. So this would be a good source of food, a good source of mushrooms, you know, you need to make fermented spider eyes. Um, and then also you can use the pigmen to, you could kill the pigmen to get gold, and as long as you kill them off before there are too many that they'd kill you, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah. So that would be an easy source of gold, and of course I put it way deep down in the mountain, so it would be hard to get in and out of. And I'm not saying you couldn't dig to it from another location, there's no bedrock walls or anything hidden down below. The only thing that has bedrock hidden um, is the tube. This tube here. Oh look, now the watermelon's coming out. Yay! <laughs> so, I hope you can kind of see it. There's some bedrock there and there, and there's actually a tube of water coming from all the way back here. So if we go out behind it, and you can see I have a convenient glass block broken. Eh. Break. There we go. Come up behind it, you can see I have a whole ton of redstone. <laughs> um, this right here is a 7 segment display, I don't need to go into that. And this right here is the... Oh, the... the Automatic melon farm. There we go. This was back in the day before you needed, uh, but when watermelon still needed tilled soil, and of course you can see that it doesn't have it anymore, but this this was a, a bud switch that would work in such a way that the grass, the, the soil would not, 
it would stay tilled um, when the watermelon grew on it because it removed the soil actually before the watermelon growed, calculation-wise. Grew, growed, grew. So that way it wouldn't get destroyed. And then the melons would all collect down to a middle point, and then they'd flow here, and it was, I did it this way because it doesn't make a splashing noise. If you have ice with a half slab, you know, and you just start the water stream over and over again, every single time the watermelon would flow through, it would make a splash noise. So not only could that cause sound lag, I guess I can just break through here. Not only could that cause sound lag, you'd also hear it as it flowed underneath your feet because it flows out from right underneath this tower. So yeah, that's this map. Um, of course, there's plenty of sand around here. Oh boy, getting really weird frame rate lag. I'm sorry about this, guys. But um, the best two chests would be these two. They're both exactly the same. So just some helmet, an iron sword, as well as some arrows. And then the best chest in the whole game on each side would be this one. You can see there's a whole ton of arrows. There's even some golden apples, some gunpowder to make TNT real quick, um, some glowstone dust to strengthen your potions, um, some gold nuggets to make your watermelons, and even diamond pickaxes so you can mine really quickly. This would be a good goal for the enemy to destroy real quick because it would be hard for them to run all the way over here and destroy that, but it would be very easy for your team to sprint through here come over there, grab the diamond pickaxes, and then jump down, swim up, or even make a bridge across from up here and grab the diamonds right there, or grab the diamonds on their side. Um, so that would be a pretty good rush strategy. I think that might prove to be so powerful, though, that I would get rid of those diamond pickaxes and just put a couple stone pickaxes in there. I don't know. But yeah. So um, let me know what you think, you guys. The whole point of me showing you this is because I worked pretty hard on this map way back in the day, but I never released it because I didn't finish the redstone. Um, as you can see here, there's no redstone going in between. I think there might even be wireless redstone in the, down in there using the old glitch with glass and iron bars. Um, but then I think I removed that because pl if players discovered that, they could exploit it and build glass you know, panes or iron bars and, and mess with the other team's... Uh, workings or mess with their own workings that actually having to get to the hill. But with command blocks now, you don't need to worry about that. So I could switch it over. Um, but yeah, that's one of the points of this video is I wanted to ask your guys' opinions what you thought of this map and, more importantly, do you think I should finish it? I would have to rebuild a lot of things, redo a lot of the redstone, um, rework some of the logistics of this and tweak some of the, you know, because the game has changed a lot in the year uh, that I've, you know, designed this a year ago. Um, so the game has changed a lot since then. But, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. I, I want to know if you guys think I should work on this map some more and try to finish it off and then release it as a map. Um, I wanted to, let, wanted to know if you guys would play a map like this. Um, just so you know, these two TNT cannons I think I'd have to remove because I don't think you can shoot TNT that far anymore. And I think you can't use the corner TNT cannons anymore either. So they'd have to, I'd have to figure out some other way, maybe put a tower like right there that shot at the middle um, to make this peninsula a little bit more advantageous. Of course, also maybe build some sort of defensive thing to shoot the bridge or to be able to destroy that chest pretty quickly and easily. But anyway, again, let me know what you guys think. And um, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. All right, bye-bye.